what is going on everybody welcome back to another video as promised we are back on schedule with our she-hulk videos and it will stay that way from now on so today we're going to talk about the third episode that we just got in detail as we break some things down and give our thoughts on it as a whole as well this video will of course contain spoilers for the episode itself so if you don't wish to hear anything that happens and haven't seen the episode for yourself yet this is your spoiler warning now make sure to come back here once you have seen the episode yourself. Before we get started on the episode, we wanted to just give a quick little shout to our clothing or merch website as we have newly designed shirts, sweatshirts, and such on the site, heavily inspired by the She-Hulk series and her comics of course, so feel free to check that out, link is in the description below. With all of that out of the way, let's get started on the third episode of the She-Hulk series titled The People vs. Emil Blonsky. We're just going to dive into the majority of the episode quickly and then we are going to touch on the bigger things that happened in the episode so let's get started as we know from the last episode jennifer has to represent emil blonsky aka abomination in court and that is exactly what we get to see throughout this episode in her case with blonsky jennifer needs to get wong involved in the case to help defend abomination and grant him his freedom from the prison as we know from the shang chi movie and from what we hear more of in this episode wong took abomination out of the prison to give him a good fight in the arena without his will for his training as the Sorcerer Supreme. So Abomination didn't really have a choice on leaving or not, but he still chose to return to the prison to fulfill his sentence. After some trouble, Jen is able to pull the case through and win it for herself, and most importantly, Abomination, as he is granted his freedom as long as he doesn't turn into Abomination and cause problems. In the middle of the case, we do get to see how Emil is able to control himself Himself, changing to Abomination and back to his human self, and now he's much like Jennifer and Bruce now, mainly like Bruce though, as Jennifer has always been able to control herself and be her own person as soon as she got her powers. But we do see that Emil is the one in control of the body, rather than the more destructive part of their lives, Abomination. Throughout this episode, there is another court case going on with Jennifer's old co-worker, Dennis, and a light elf shapeshifter from Asgard and who now resides in New Asgard. Asgard in a bunch of comedic scenes where he was tricked by the shapeshifter into thinking he was dating Megan the Stallion, who is a famous hip-hop artist. The case between the two causes Jennifer to have to come in as a witness for Dennis, and surprisingly, it helps him win the case against the shapeshifter, even after embarrassing him in front of the court. As Jennifer is on her way home, she is ambushed by a group of people who have and wear construction type of weapons that they stole from an Asgardian construction construction worker, which by the way, the weapons actually do represent what their powers and weapons were like in the comics, and their shirts had big W's on them to represent their team, or we should say crew, and as we hear one of their names is Thunderball, meaning that these guys are a part of the villainous team from the comics known as the Wrecking Crew. They are attempting to get blood from She-Hulk, but they end up failing pretty quickly too, and they mention how their boss won't be too happy about it. As for for who their boss is, well, there were a few possibilities that we were able to think of, so let's talk about those. Just to reference them a little bit, in the comics, the Wrecking Crew have worked for and under a few different people, such as Baron Zemo after he was with the Masters of Evil and bought out the Thunderbolts team. They have also worked for the Hood, who is actually going to be the villain in the upcoming Ironheart series, so those are some possibilities, but there are a few others that are possible that we want to talk about. Unfortunately, the actor who played General Ross did pass away, so I'm not sure if it's very likely anymore, or if these guys would even be hired by Ross when he could hire more professional people, but we know that Ross turns into the Red Hulk in the comics, so it is entirely possible that this is the way that they go, but we'll have to see about that because of the actor's passing. And of course, the Red Hulk has been a huge rival to the Hulk throughout the years in the comics, and there has even been a Red She-Hulk to rival against Jennifer, and Red She-Hulk was Betty Ross, who is the daughter of General Ross, and both of them have been seen in previous projects in the MCU, so I wonder if it's still a possibility to see those two Hulk out and become rivals to our two Hulk characters. However, it is also possible that they are working for someone that we have not seen in the MCU or any Marvel project ever since the Incredible Hulk movie, and I am talking about the leader, who we know not only from the ending of that 
movie and the movie as a whole, but also from the comics, of course. We know he plays a major villain role for any of the Hulks, really, and with his absence for so long after the ending of that movie, it should be really only a matter of time before he returns. That is, if Marvel is going to have him make a return, of course. We have also seen Frogman in the trailers for this series. I don't think they would work for him, but I do think that it is possible that they are working alongside him under whoever their boss ends up being, which we will have to wait and find out, possibly in the next coming episode. And as Megan the Stallion was being impersonated by the shapeshifter in the episode, yes, she does in fact make her own appearance in the episode and in the post credit scene as a new client of Jennifer's, and yes, you did see that right, they were in fact, well, twerking in the post credit scene, which I guess is hilariously where the episode ends off. So besides all of that stuff that's going on, let's give our thoughts on this episode now. Yet again, just like the first two episodes, I really enjoyed this one as well. I do think that so far the episodes are a little shorter, and I am really only saying that because I want to see more of She-Hulk, but besides that, this episode continued to carry on that comedic relief that is always around when She-Hulk herself is around, and this episode really felt like one of her comics again. And this series so far is doing such a great job at capturing the comedic side of her character, just like her comics do. As well as the fourth wall breaking, of course, which we got even more of in this episode, and that's always fun to see. I'm curious to see where the lawyer side of the show goes as well. Now that Jennifer's case with Abomination is already won, I wonder who she will be representing or going against next in court. Once again, the tie-ins to previous projects were fun to see, and we know that this is She-Hulk's show, and she made sure to tell everybody that it is, but of course seeing other characters on the side, like Abomination and Wong, is a lot of fun. I am hoping that you all have been giving this series a fair chance, and if you have been, I hope that you guys have been enjoying it just as much as I have. With all of that being said, that's about it for the third episode of the She-Hulk series. The show has been a lot of fun so far, and it's been a blast, and we can't wait for the next episode, and we hope that there will be much more to break down in the coming episodes so that we can bring you longer videos and more in-depth videos. Before we get out of here though, make sure to let us know how you're liking the series so far down in the comments below, but also with all of these new shows coming out recently, such as House of Dragons and now Rings of Power, also be sure to let us know if you would like to see us make videos on those shows as well. We love those universes and would love to share our interest with those shows with you guys here on the channel as well, and it would help us bring an expansion to the channel while doing it. And lastly, let us know what kind of comic related content you would like to see us make on the channel as well. With all of that being said though, as I always say, thank you all for watching, and make sure that if you are feeling extra nerdy today, to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications on to help support the channel and to get more nerdy content like this. We will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.